this really European you know, stuff, you know, American stuff, and really seeing that, and not, and not seeing myself. You know, you went to school, you know. I didn't know, I didn't know any black artists until I met Bob Reed and Skidmore, you know what I mean? And, and I figured he must probably be ancient, and he was a young guy. I was like, wow. I was surprised, you know what I mean? So I didn't know where we were, or in you go to the museum, of course you didn't see yourself, you know what I mean? So I didn't know where I, I, but I felt I wanted, I wanted to paint. I mean, I, it was difficult because I wanted to paint. I mean, I painted through civil rights. I mean, I painted through, I painted when the Panthers knocked on the door and said, Stanley, come on. And I would say, D tell them I'm not here. I'm in the basement painting from Goya, you know what I mean? Uh, so, which I didn't know what that meant, you know what I mean? Uh, it kind of scared me. Because I thought I should be out there, but I knew I wanted to paint, you know. But I didn't know what I didn't know what. So all that stuff was really, really hard for me to negotiate, to really, to do, to figure this stuff out, you know, to, to bring all this stuff together. Now I know where everything fits, you know, the music, the Goya, the Planters. I, you know, I know how it fits in my work. But then I, I, I it, it really was. I just followed the work. I mean, I, I didn't have any. I just followed the work. The work said Stanley. We're going out the window, under the door, around the corner. I just went with it. You know what I mean? What do you think led you to the process of understanding? In the studio, just working, hard work. I mean, really, just in the studio. I mean, it wasn't just in the studio. I mean, it was. When I say in the studio, it was also out looking at work. You know what I mean? I mean, I I really looked at a lot of work. I mean, I mean, I came to New York for that. You know, I came to New York because '68. Basically, we came to New York because, you know, there were great shows. Uh, I saw a lot of great art. Uh, Arts were available. I mean, it was a great time. You know, you could be someplace. There were lots of art bars in those days, and the art world was very smaller. So, you know, I mean, you could be, you could be in the same bar with the Cooney. I mean, I didn't talk to the Cooney, but I, I, I act like I drank with him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, you, you, you could really be around all the stuff, you know what I mean, whether it was that or... Warhol, you know, I mean, things were really, so I, I that's why I came, you know, to be part, to be part of this uh, uh, so-called, whatever it was, art world, jazz world, in this kind of like new, yeah, the scene, the scene. What do you, what's made you stay, I guess, in New York? I know you split, split, split time between New York and Italy and you travel a lot, but what sort of made you keep New York as a home base? I don't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really don't. I don't. I mean, I don't know where else to go. Uh, I, I mean, if I was a young artist, I don't know what I would do. You know, I mean, I always tell artists you do what's best for the work. You know what I mean? And New York's been good for me for the work. Um, but I, I don't know. Now, you know, I did a show in in, in uh, Berlin. I showed work from my studio in Italy and my studio here. And you couldn't tell the difference in the work. Um, which I was surprised. I mean, I was surprised, but you couldn't. Uh, I thought maybe the Italian work, made, the color, maybe look different or something like that. But I, I, I now I think I could paint anywhere. But um, I don't know where else I would really go. I think about that sometimes. You know, what I mean, if I went someplace else, or if I lost my place, you know, what would I do? You know, everyone, a lot of people going upstate, a lot of people going Long Island. Uh, I don't know if I. Really, I mean, I don't know if I want to do that. I, I don't. I don't know uh, where I would do. But I, I, and I wouldn't be able to tell young artists where to go. You know, I mean, I think you just, I think you do what's best for the work, and if the work is really, if you can do the work there, that's great. Whatever, because, you know, it depends on what the work needs. You know, if the work needs, I always thought what the work needed. It was never about what I needed. It was really more about the work, what the work needed. You know, that's how I, that's how I did it. Jenny, I actually don't know if I know what brought you to New York. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> Deep question. Well, kind of the same thing, but I, I grew up in Ohio. Uh, when I first w was looking at undergrads, I, kn I knew that I was not capable in my tenderoni Midwestern way to deal with New York at 18. So I went to Chicago, which is a good in-between city, and people say good morning to you, and you're still kind of in the Middle West, but it's very contemporary. And um, so I had a couple of lost years in California. And then, um, yeah, not, yeah. Um, 
the 93 Whitney Biennial happened at the same time that we just had the LA riots. And I was <laughs> like, why am I on the wrong coast? <laughs> because the conversation for that particular biennial was so loaded with, uh, with feminists, with more women, more people of color than any other biennial. So I started looking at grad school on the, on the East Coast um, and ended up at Rutgers and then crept into New York with the roommates that you make in New Jersey. <laughs> Yeah. And why have you stayed? I also feel very trapped. <laughs> There's no way. Where do you go? Where do, I don't know where to go. I mean, uh, it's like the golden handcuffs. That, you know, we think about it, seeing neighborhoods change, and I'm sort of like, well, until I lose my place, I'm in this place. It's a beautiful apartment, and I'm rent stabilized. So, um, but I, I have make jokes that I really don't want to be the cart person screaming about socialism in the street with a squeaky cart because that's I could see that personal evolution happen. <laughs> so I would like to if yeah, I would like to find an option that's you know the upstate Long Island thing seems to be the only thing people talk about and I don't I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think I would do that. But I, I just say well, but but New York has does have energy. I mean you know it has its energy still. I mean that I mean man, Downtown's not the downtown I know anymore. You know what I mean? I was always a downtown person. Um, I don't, uh, so, but still when you walk out your door, you know, there's this energy, you know? And um, even I'm in Italy for the summer, you come back and there's this energy, you know, in New York. And it's pretty exciting. Um, y there's still lots of young people, you know? I mean, my neighbor, too many. But... <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I think it's really this, this sort of energy there, you know. And um, there's still a lot of uh, great shows being done um, to see, you know, art-wise, you know. I mean, I think about Berlin, you know, stuff like that. I thought, I thought about living in Berlin once, and, but I went there, and I think I went there early March, and it was a big mistake. I couldn't get out of, it was so cold, I read a book all weekend in the hotel room. I thought, and I was living in Rome, so I thought, well, I'm going to Berlin. Um, but, so I thought about that, you know what I mean? You know what that is. Um, but there's still something about New York, I think, that I, 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 I still really like. But I, 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 you know, the way I do it now, I try to go in and out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I try, if I go in and out, come back and forth, that seems to be a good system for me right now. I was just gonna ask, uh, over this time period that you've been in New York, what, if you have anything to say about the way you've seen the sh scene shift or the way uh, focus or, you know, here we are talking about black abstraction, which is totally not, would not have happened even 15 years ago per se, not in this context and not in this in this way. Just so things coming in and out of Vogue or how you've seen cycles in New York. Oh, yeah, I think things have, definitely things have, uh, God, things have changed enormously. I mean, God, I... I mean, I wish I, I, I'm I wish thinking. I could I'm see thinking, what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, right, right, you were right. like there. No, because, because downtown used to be empty. You know, it was really. I mean, the first time I went downtown, I first time I went to New York in '68, and I, and I, someone said to the party, and it wasn't even Soho in those days. It was just, oh, I guess it was Soho, but and they said, well, there's a party somewhere like on Green Street or something like that, and and I was uh, staying with someone like maybe on Great Jones, something like that. I think Dan Christensen or something, and so I said there was a loft party, there's going to be a loft parties. And so I went to go down to Soho, what we call Soho, and it was just this black square with no lights and no, and I said, I'm not going in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's so it's, it's just changed tremendously. And and you didn't, I mean, I've just, if we talked about color, we Conver didn't Conversations have changed or evolved and shifted. Oh. No time. I mean, in 10 years, I mean, things just changed enormously. Uh, the art world, I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, Lower East, I was just talking to, to Sir Early, but Lower, Lower East Side, seeing what that was, uh, talking to Basquiat, what that was. I mean, it used to be, I always thought there was like really like the Berlin Wall. There was a, a, a wall, a, a race wall in the art world, like the Berlin Wall, that you just couldn't get through. You know, you were you know you just couldn't get through, and it wasn't the artists; it, it was more collectors, dealers, you know, like that. Uh, that basically, basically, you just couldn't get through. You know what I mean? Mm. It wasn't much different than say real estate in a way. You know what I mean? Um, not like that, where you could buy a house. You know what I mean? Um, 
it was tough. It was really tough. Um, and there weren't that many of us around, you know, honestly. Um, it was really, it was hard. It was hard. Uh, it was hard. And, and um, do you feel like at that time your engagement with with the studio museum was it was it all was there any kind of gap there because of the kind of work that the studio museum was focusing on in the early years? Well, I mean, or? The studio museum when I first I mean I did the show at the museum in eighty one that's when they had the loft and it was just beginning you know it was just really beginning and uh, yeah it felt more it felt more like church if you ask me. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> maybe, expl <laughs> maybe explain what you mean oh, yeah. by church. Well, it was more like a black institution, more like a, a, you know, uh, a, uh, a black church. You know what I mean? That's what I felt like. It was, I didn't think at the time it was, it was that deep into uh, really... Well, I, I didn't think it gave you enough... Op you know, there, there, was a whole, there was a whole issue about you know, what blackness is, you know what I mean, and what they represent. I mean, you know, you still have that in America, you know, who's black, who isn't bla black, or who's really black, you know, how black, um, that, um, you know, I never identified with. I mean, you know, I, used to, I refer to the black police, you know, I mean, they police you in terms of what is for the B. And I understand what that is, I understand what that is. I mean, you're, you're, we're a community under siege, you know what I mean, and you're doing this stuff, you know, with, you know, because you know, well, we all know you can be standing by the at your hotel room, the cop can come up and tackle you and mess you up real good. We just saw that. I mean, you know, I could go out here today and go get a cab before I know it. I'm on the, you know, on the ground being like, you know, taken downtown for something I did. So you know, uh, you, and so you're you're always painting under that kind of stuff, and you and 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 making being intellectual under that stuff. And it's always sort of about the black body more than the black mind. So, you know, but it was the beginning of something. You know, it was just the beginning of something. So um, that that wasn't big enough for me, you know, to what I wanted to do or where I was going to go, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I, I, I was involved with that uh, a little bit, you know. And, and uh, there were people downtown. And, but I, and I, I wasn't, I wasn't hanging, it out, pe hanging out with people because they were black or no, I hung out with people who I thought were really good artists. You know, I mean, whoever they were, I didn't care. You know, I I didn't care. Arrest me. <laughs> you know, that's the way I felt. You know. Can we talk a little bit about influences? I know you both talk about some of the artists you're influenced by. How music plays a role in your work. A lot of reading. A lot of just taking in outside sources. But are there particular influences that the two of you share or besides music, other artists that you're both sort of thinking a lot about or even thinking about recently? I don't know. Okay. I, I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> Who do you like? <laughs> I have to say I loved seeing Martin Purrier's presence in Chelsea last year, and that was really just um, kind of in your face to, uh, to different generations of sculptors that uh, their hand is removed from the work, and to see that kind of mastery uh, at, it was, was just very moving to see Martin have a presence in the middle of Chelsea last year. But like conte I don't, contemporary, yeah, I agree. Mar I, you know, I was with Mar Martin's great artist. Yeah, I agree with that. And it's interesting, Martin, in terms of his in his position and how much he's a uh, individual or a loner. Mm -hmm. You know about that. You know and why that is, or in myself, how much I'm a loner. You know, because of that, you know, because of our race, uh, how race sort of, or race kind of, uh, I never thought of it before, I'm thinking about it right now, but I think race allows you, being a minority is a really strange thing to be a minority in a society, and uh, how that allows, and, and, and Martin used to always say the lonely way is the only way, which I don't know if I agree with anymore, but um, I think that that's yeah. something well, about you know, I was thinking about Agnes Martin for next week, but Agnes yeah. is, is, you know, said that she doesn't think you can be an artist if you cannot be alone. Like that there's a certain amount well, of being that. able to sit with yourself that you have to have. Oh, I agree. I, I think you have to love the studio. You know, I mean, you love to be, you know, by yourself alone. I mean, I love, you know, like I say, I don't, I love that way uh, in the studio being alone like that. Um, and what that is, you know, that that's something you have to really do as an artist. I totally agree, but I think there's something about that, you know, where Martin's work is in terms of 
how odd it is in terms of it's kind of minimalist, it's kind of this, it's kind of that's kind of craft, you know, it's kind of, but it's not one, it's not a group, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, that it's it's interesting that way. Because when I came to town, you know, you couldn't really get involved with a group. You couldn't, you know, you know, be, you weren't really, I wasn't really allowed in on the Greenberg thing, and I wasn't really allowed in a lot of other things, you know what I mean? The Greenberg thing, that there was much more of a black culture in that, you know what I mean? Because um, they liked the music, the jazz, they liked that. They, and they had great parties. But um, but art-wise, you weren't really allowed in too much with that. And I think that Martin's interesting, too, in terms of how much a loner he is, in terms of what he took from here, there, you know, all of, and maybe you, too. Yeah. You know, how much you take from here, there, and or sort of alone, and how you pursue it, you know, and, and being minority. We doing all right? <laughs> so hard. Do either of you have any questions for each other? Yeah, do you wanna? We can ask you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> that, do you have any questions you wanna, for you? Or me? I, sure. Are we or get me. some institutional yeah. critique right now? <laughs> but no, just in thinking about, I know we talked before we started about, it was the show, a show that you guys were both in down in Houston and talking about this idea and sort of what it meant or even remembering sort of seeing each other's work in context with your own work? Well, I, I liked that piece a lot because I loved how, I loved where the music was, how quiet it was. I loved the, I loved the object, how particular it was. You know, I loved, I loved the different things, you know, in terms of what she, how she took those, took those things and put those things together. And it was such a classical piece, you know what I mean? Can you uh, describe the piece for us, Jenny, that he's talking about? I, I know it's amazing because, thank you very much. Um, it was a black panel with a black panel on it. <laughs> with, oh, she a, says. with a thin uh, <laughs> yellow side that, that kind of, um, you know, my interest in color and back to that conversation is the, is the way that optics can relate to sonic work. And so having a vibrant strip of yellow that would sort of bounce off of the white gallery wall and make this little glow on the side. It's like a hum. Um, yeah. You had, that was, that was you, a, had to, you had to see it. <laughs> She's not describing it. Really. <laughs> it's very magical. But this was, I think, a landmark show for Valerie uh, Cassell Oliver to to tackle to tackle a show that was cross generational that was focusing on abstraction geometric and non geometric abstraction to look at a, at a a time period as well as to say let's look at African American artists and their engagement with yeah I I think so yeah I thought it was a really beautiful show you know what I mean you know I'm not really you know I want to be in shows with people who are really good artists not because you know, they're Afro American or women or whatever, tall or small or whatever. Um, um and so that was a but that was a great show. A really beautiful show. I'm glad I'm glad I got down to see it, yeah. really. Uh, it was a really fantastic show. A lot of, and a lot of, I saw a lot of you know, people I work I don't know, you know, young people I, I don't know. I mean uh, there's a lot of young artists out there I don't know now. I I, just, I always forget how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Can Stanley, we talk a little bit about your show upstairs, Dance the Orange, and in thinking about how the exhibition came together, and not even just this exhibition, but other exhibitions that you've been in, how much or where you see yourself in the process of the curatorial process when you're working with the curator, in this case me, but in other cases, <laughs> how much <laughs> sort of the back Well, I have to thank you because I, you, made, you made life easy that for me. Uh, I know, I know, I know, but you did. I mean, you really did because you went out and got, got, like I said, you went out and got the work and the work. I mean, I, I, I always vision said, well, I can take some new work and hang it on the wall. Uh, but you, uh, no, no, sh you know, we're going to go out and, and call people up and get work. And I was like, okay. Um, and so you did a wonderful, wonderful, uh, and you, and you use the space so well. Um, I, I, you know, the show, um, I always envisioned the show. I all when I did the show, like I said, I oh, I really thought I put those three big paintings on the wall, and then whatever. You know what I mean? That's how I thought. Uh, I just want to have the really three big paintings on the wall. You know what I mean? And see that, and then whatever we do the rest, I I, I wasn't really really uh, thinking that much about. To tell you the truth, um, the show. Um, you know, I um, I don't know what to say about the show. The show, I'm, I'm very happy with the show. Uh, uh, the show. Yeah. 
Well, I know, Stanley, when sometimes when you're looking at the works, do they feel different after they've left the studio or in the conversation? Well, you know, I, I, I never, I never, you know, I, well, all the shows I do, I never feel I see the work until the, I, until the show. Uh, in the studio, my studio, I don't have very good lighting, um, uh, and I... Can you not get far, far away? I can get far, I can, I, no, I can get far yeah. away. I can yeah. get as far, I can get really far away like that. Yeah. So I can get far away, which is really good, but I don't, I don't have very good lighting. And I know in my studio, like, the darks don't look so good. Uh, I and I don't really see the color until it goes out. I mean, I, I you know you know really I kind of feel the work more than see the work. I I think feel think I feel you know, um, and that just comes from painting, 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 painting. You know, when I with the dinner parties uh, for the Carmen the like Carmen show, the guy got up and said, "Well, Stanley's been painting the same painting for forty years," and I thought, "I have," <laughs> and I thought, I thought, oh. Uh, I could, I kept, you know, I, I paint on the painting, paint on the painting, paint on the painting. I, you know, um, and I, I just keep trying to get at something, you know what I mean? Um, so um, when they go out, then I really see them, you know what I mean? So, for, for to have a sh so you know, at a certain point, I think everybody, even, even young artists, you get to a point where you need an audience. You know, you just need an audience. There was a point where I didn't need an audience. You know, I, just, I need to get in there and paint every day, every day. I need to go out and look at work. I need to go make work. You know what I mean? I, I, a few friends come over and talk about it. That was, that was, oh, you really need an audience. And so the work sort of really sort of demanded that. So th now the show, I can really see the work, you know? I, I, I haven't seen the work yet. I haven't seen the work yet next to something like at the Cooney, you know what I mean, which I really want to see. You know what I mean, to see whether, like, let's say, okay, you think you have good color, you think you draw so well, <laughs> you know what I mean, you think you're good, you know. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's what I would like to see. I like to see my work, you know, next to Cezanne, you know what I mean, and say, okay, let's see what you got here, you know. So that's kind of what, that's kind of, so, but the show was great because I really get to see you know, just see just see things out. Was I mean, there anything you know? upstairs that surprised you, like pieces that were loaned that you hadn't seen in a while, or seeing them juxtaposed against uh, newer pieces, or anything that popped that was a surprise or good to see again kind of moment? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing even surprises me. I mean. Uh, well, it's hard for me to see the show because you know it's it's almost you know think about the a show that I'm sure like it's almost it's almost embarrassing, you know because you know uh, you know it's embarrassing people say they like him so much you know I like it you know it's embarrassing I, I have a hard time with it you know uh, but no nothing really nothing you know the black and white things I was curious, curious about those I uh, I wanted to see with those I know something new that I've just done, started doing um, and I I you know. Uh, but no, um, it kind of it kind of came out the way I thought. Really, uh, um, I, I'm, I I thought that I I really do. I think the ones that Lauren picks uh, that she got from people are good ones. You know, are good ones. You know, the, the thing about having a show like this is there's some good paint in the show, and so now when I go to the studio and paint, you know, it's like I want to paint good paintings. If I know that's not good. You know, I mean, I, I so because you know, if you do a show, it'll do a lot of really good paint over the years. They they show ten paintings that are really good. I mean, in between that, you know, not all that good. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, so you want to sort of you sort of really want to keep that that. And then also a show like this, you really kind of think, okay, I gotta really keep feeding this thing. You know, I gotta make this thing grow. I I have to really keep uh, moving. And uh, how am I going to feed this thing? You know, and so that really, I mean, with my paint, I'm surprised that I, you know, I never thought I would be like this kind of signature kind of painter, which is kind of odd in this day and age to be a signature kind of painter. You know, like that's Stanley Whitney, you can know, you know, you know right away. Um, I keep doing, you know, like this, you know, same painting over again. I mean, but then if I listen to Bud Powell and he plays the same song over again, you know, I mean, I'm happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Um, but it's just mm -hmm. uh, that that's that's those are the kind of things I'm thinking about, you know, when I see the work. And this work this work is fine, everything, great and everything. I'm happy with I'm very happy with the show. Don't get me wrong, I'm really happy with the show. But I'm now I'm thinking like, Okay, Stanley, you know. Right now I just want to go back in the studio and just work, you know, you know. Not until Friday. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm worried about that. <laughs>
And Jenny, you're right now in the process of preparing for your solo show compilation that's going to open at the Contemporary Arts Museum in Houston in December. So what has it been like as you're going through the work and working with Valerie, who we keep talking about, which makes me very excited, but how that has been sort of looking back at works that you've made in the past and... I feel that I can definitely relate to the, oh, the, there's boxes under the bed that Valerie really wanted me to pull out and show drawings from 2004 or three, and, and you know, we put a cap on it, so it's a solid decade sort of snapshot, but there are definitely, um, it's very existential and weird to go back and look at your own work in that way, and then to read someone else's writing about a time period of your life, that's really weird. And I am, uh, you know, sometimes by choice, but often not a loner type. Um, and, uh, you know, the island of misfit, <laughs> island of misfit artist. <laughs> so um, it's been intense. Um, and then it's all going into a book, which is even more intense, because then it's a real thing. Um, so it's exciting, but uh, I'm so such a nervous Nelly that it's also scary. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of what you want. I mean, it's kind of what you, you know what you get. You kind of want this thing, and you get this thing, and then you know it's it's kind of what you want, but it's a lot to deal with. A lot to deal with, you know. Well, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> And Stanley, you talked about getting back into the studio and seeing what's coming next. Do you, do you have a feeling? Do you have an idea, sort of, what you're hoping or thinking about? Uh, well, you know, no. I mean, I, I, I the, like my work doesn't change. That my work, cha you know, if we did a thing of my work, my work doesn't. It changes, but very changes slowly. Like I said, I like so I like the Mondrian kind of like step by step. So it changes very slowly. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not, you know, when I face the canvas and do that, I'm just working and it's just what I bring to it. So I don't really know. I'm going to, I'm going to go off to, I've never been east. I'm going to go to Japan for a month and just travel around. I mean, I'm not going there to look for any particular thing or, or anything I, I think I want. I mean, when I was young, like I always said, I, I went to uh, Egypt and I found density, you know, which was one of the last pieces of the puzzle. But being a mature artist now and not and having all the pieces of the work or how things are going to shift or change, I don't know. It's just really well, working at a certain a high level, you know, and keeping it at a really high level and keep yourself very sharp. Um, so, I, I no, I don't really, you know, right now it's just, um, you know, I, I just, en I, you know, I paint, I enjoy, I'm like a, you know, if you paint too long, you're like a junkie. I just enjoy painting. You know, I just want to paint all the time. You know, I'm, it's like if I don't paint, I feel like, you know, I need another fix. So I just want to paint, you know. So it's not, it's nothing like, uh, to me, odd about that, you know, because that's, that's what I do. You know, that, that's what I, I mean. I, you know, that's what I, I always, I always did that, you know. So that's what I'm going to keep uh, doing. Um, I think now is a good moment to open it up to questions. Nico has a microphone, so. I see you. I see you. Uh, this question or is for uh, Mr. Whitney. Uh, I read some of the, um, I read your interview with uh, David Reed, painter, um, and I've been reading some of the other uh, media in the press. The press is saying that you're reinvigorating uh, pure abstraction. And, and that seems right to me because yes. you're focusing on color. Right. And color seems to me to be like the most abstract thing. Ever. I mean, what is it? it th what kind of meaning can it have? A, a color can have a meaning maybe in reference, in comparison to another color perhaps. Right. But as a pure visual experience, what does color mean? So that's what I want you to kind of talk about because that's, that was in there in that interview with David Reed about, you know, the meaning of color. And I'm thinking about that. I came all the way from Pennsylvania. I'm thinking about this on the bus. Like, what does oh, color mean? <laughs> you know? Well, I had no idea. <laughs> Sorry. You know, <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, I mean, I got it. Now I, I feel like I should give you some kind of answer. Um, yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't, you know, that, you know, the thing about color is color, you know, I, I never got into what color means. Color to me is you know, the thing about art, and what I think what people want from art is magic. You want something really, you know, the thing about pa paintings are, 
paintings go on the wall of someone's house. It's funny how paintings sort of get involved with architecture and people's lives and how much they're an object, how much they're not an object. Um, if you live with a painting, you know, like living with somebody, you pass them in the day, you kind of look at them, you talk to them, you know. I don't know if people, you know, if you live with somebody, you know, in the morning, how you all react to each other. Uh, you know, the time you need, stuff like that. And painting kind of that is a weird thing that way. Uh, color, uh, I got, I, color has such deep feelings. And my work, even my, my, even my dealers say, when they show someone a painting, put a painting on the wall, someone says, what, if they get into what they're going to buy. Because like, if you think about the show up here, and if you like the work, you think, okay, and you could buy anyone, you would think, well, what am I going to buy now? What am I going to live with now? And that's what you're thinking about. And I try to make things that really are people to really live with, to really uh, to have something in their house that's really positive, they get a lot out of, and, and feel good about the world. You know what I mean? Uh, good about themselves. Maybe, you know, about the world, maybe not just good. And um, color, I think you don't really want to nail it down. You know, color... I don't want to nail it down. That's why I never like theories about color. I have no color theory. If someone came to me and said, well, that does this and this does that, I go, okay, that does this and that does that. Well, you know. So I don't really, I don't, I don't really those kind of answers, I, I don't really know. The, and the color to me is almost like, you know, um, when I think about sort of Billie Holiday singing, and, and if I try to sing the long Billie Holiday, the space she's in, and where she sings, and where the space she's in, and how she gets, how she moves to that space, it's just magical. And I, I kind of want that kind of feeling of magic in the work. So there's a big connection with my work into the music, you know, in terms of that. But I don't really know um, anything about color. Sorry to tell you. <laughs> yeah. that, that, sorry. Go ahead. Ask me another one. The thing that got me was you said you made a comment about, or maybe he did, David Reed did about color being decoration, being decorative. Oh yeah. So oh, I said I said I didn't want color to be decorative. Yeah. 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 So like, in a basic level, color is decorative. I mean, because what else? Well, but color, color, but color, color. But I want a color to have a real intellect. You know what I mean? Right. You know, and that's true. I, I, the color is not just decorative. I mean, it's not color like because if you go into a great designer store, like Paul Smith, I think always had great color on his, even his wallet. And uh, I mean, that's to me not the color I'm talking about. Right. But right. that's and that, that's that's uh, f color can be a lot of things, you know. Um, but I'm talking about color. I want color would have a real uh, intellect with it. Um, I don't know if I, I do that. I I don't know. I I don't know if I really do that. But that's what I I strive for. But my color. I did have one last. Um, if you Quickly, sure, go for you it. Come, you came from Pennsylvania. Yeah, you came from Philadelphia. Just um, <laughs> the thing was, um, I understand you're going for pure abstraction, and I I get that. I mean, I think they're beautiful. I have to get up there and actually really look at them now. But the thing is, uh, I had this off the wall thought too, that as like a person of color, you have. They kind of expect you to do something about your black experience, I, I think. Only and, in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And, um, you know, here you're going on to pure abstraction, and yet, if you look at it in a psychological way, like, you're a person of color, and your, your subject matter is color. Well, I don't, you know, the thing about this, you know, you know, it's a funny thing, you know, you don't really get up in the morning and think you have a person of color <laughs> and you don't really I don't really fit when I'm facing the canvas think I am I mean right. until right. you said that I didn't know that <laughs> uh, you know you just don't think that you know you think you're you're just, you're just a person right, you right. know if I'm facing Goya you know looking at Goya I mean it's funny because I, I you know now I can think of myself when I was a little kid and I used to go to the Frick and stand in front of Goya you know I man maybe it was in the 60s and I'm sure they must have thought, what this little blind kid doing here looking at this Goya? Uh, but I didn't see myself that way. I saw myself as a painter and looking at Goya. Uh, so I don't really, you know, now, you're right in this. And what I bring to it is I, I bring to, you know, what I bring to painting is I bring this experience. I bring, I bring, I bring the experience of getting my ass kicked in Philadelphia by the cops. I bring my experience of looking, of, of looking at uh, uh, 
uh, say Cezanne and listening to, to uh, uh, Billy Holiday or Bud Powell, you know what I mean? I bring that thing. So I'm bringing that stuff to painting, you know what I mean? Just like people look at those, uh, well, yeah, is it, well, it's in everything. It's in, my, it's, it's in everything, you know, and I'm not, and that's, that's what I, I and painting is a tradition. It's a long tradition, uh, and you want to, you want to continue the tradition, and you want to be able to be maybe a big part, a link in it if you can. So I bring, when you paint, when you make art, you have to bring everything you can to that experience. So my experience of, uh, of being, you know, what people uh, keep telling me, what I, 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 is I'm a black man in America, that I bring that, to exp I bring all that, you know what I mean? Now, that, yeah, everything, everything. So, yeah. Whatever. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for indulging sure. me. Sure. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, the relationship of drawing to painting, how y your drawing and your painting relate to each other, and then also how when you're painting, it walks away from drawing. Well, I don't think it walks away from drawing. I mean, you don't necessarily see... See, you know, it's it's not like you. The drawing is like the skeleton, just like your skeleton. You don't walk away from it; it's just there. You don't see. I don't see your skeleton. I mean, when you die, we'll see your skeleton. So there's a skeleton of the drawing. You don't necessarily see that, see that so much. I mean, I think you see that with the drawings upstairs, maybe with the black and white. Maybe you see it a little bit more with the with the gouaches. You know what I mean? Um, but and the drawing. Um, when I draw, in fact, I draw with line. You know, mostly just line, 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 not with mass. Uh, so the draw the drawing is something that allows me to uh, I work with the drawing so the color sits in the right space. You know, we were talking earlier about putting things, you know, being particular and exact. So drawing allows me to be more exact. So it's okay to figure out the space in the painting? For you? No, it's not a way to be able to recognize the space in the painting, you know, when I, I draw. Uh, drawing, drawing is a, 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 a way for me to recognize where where the color sits in space, and so if I'm gonna, if I, I paint a very frontal space, the, the, I, the drawing allows me to be exact. You know, I, I draw so I can be exact. You know, that's how I, that's what I do. I just wanted to say I think it's really interesting when we the the further we get into talking about process how unique it is and how huge it is to even talk about process and that you know sometimes there's an assumption that a work on paper is a sketch or a work on paper can stand alone as a as a, a piece of art separate from this other practice but I think they're symbiotic and they feed into each other and I feel like when I look at your works on paper in tandem with the paintings that they're feeding into each yeah, other right. that one isn't a precursor, yeah, exactly. but that but they are kind of fluid. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Well said. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Hi, Stanley. Yes. Uh, you may not care to answer the question, but uh, then do I have to? You don't have to answer <laughs> the question. <laughs> but in when you talk about uh, your interest in music and its relationship to your work. And this is kind of a funny question, but do you start in the upper left-hand corner? Well, you know, everyone's, you know, I'm so, why, why did I ever say that? You know, this is, this is, a, thing, this is a thing about uh, things. Yeah, I do start in the left-hand corner, uh, and I start, I start up there, and I put a line across the top, and I go from there. It, it, and that's just the way, it's, it's, you know, and when I write, I start over here, and I put the S, and I write my name like that. And so when I make my art, I kind of, it's, that's the kind of what I do too. So it's almost like, a, a, it's almost like I write my name. So yeah, I, I do that, but that's not where, that's just where I start. Where do, you I turn it, do you ever turn anything upside down? No, I don't turn it upside down. And I, I know top and bottom, and I, no, I never, don't, I never do that, no. But I, so yeah, I do that, but that's just like, where I start is just, uh, it's just a put something down from, and then it's, from, and then, I want something to really wrestle with, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's just something, it's for me to sort of wrestle with. But yeah, I do start like that, you know? And I put music on in the studio, I put the music on, and I get really quiet, you know? And, um, then, I and then it begins, you know? Then it begins. And then... Uh, so if you started with a color of the upper left hand corner, yeah. and you finished the painting, you wouldn't be tempted to go back and change the color? 
All of them. They can, they, they can change. They can change any time. Yeah. No, colors get changed a lot. It's not like things don't get changed. Sometimes things get readjusted. Sometimes they, whatever it needs. It's whatever it needs. It's not like any. I mean, sometimes I can make a painting in. I one time actually even the, even that painting uh, dance the orange. I think I painted that painting in like twenty minutes, and it scared the hell out of me. You know, I I said I, cause I but I had been painting a lot. You know what I mean? And I've been painting a lot, and that painting came so quickly. I was like, I thought, well, that can't be. <laughs> you know what I mean? I scared. It really scared me. I thought, well, that can be. You know what I mean? I said I have to go back in that painting, something like that. And the, but uh, my wife, Marina Adams, the painter, said Stanley is done. I said, really? I said, you're lying. She said, no, it's done. And I said, I said, I said, really? She said, look, tough. Keep asking me. It's <laughs> done. And I, I left it. But it was hard for me to leave it. And I left it. And then it was hard for me even to show it because I thought if I show it. I thought, well, I wonder if it really is done. Although my, my Marina doesn't lie to me, but I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it when, when Serena lost. <laughs> <laughs> my Bring son told me Serena lost. Yeah. I couldn't handle it. I was like, no, you're lying. I went home and checked the paper. What's that? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It takes a lot of time. It takes well, pay, you know, making art is an old person's thing. I mean, yeah, definitely. I think it takes a long time to, to work. I mean, I believe in that, but you know, it it depends. Some people can, some people get things early, and some people get things late. It's just a, there's no, you know, being the artist, there's no. It's just people get there whenever they get there. You never know when you're going to get there. Some people get there early. Some get there. I don't know. I mean, I think Frank Stella did his best work early, although them big show. I mean, I, some people get there early. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just I I I'm sorry I got here so late. Really, I wish I got here earlier. I, I was thinking about the um, the show inventing abstraction and how in the critique of that show they said that it omitted uh, early African sculpture textiles and the, its influence on abstract painting. And I feel like your voice is is the most authentic abstract voice, and that that. Uh, white artists are are looking for permission to make abstract painting because of its origins in um, indigenous culture, and so when we look at abstract mark making, it always goes back to African textiles, African ceramics, African beadwork, and when you said that you were waiting for, you know, permission to be recognized as an abstract painter versus a figurative painter, when, you know. Everything you look at in our history is this beautiful pattern and color of, of traditional African craft. And I don't know if that was something you looked at early on or it was even part of the conversation. Well, I, yeah, I looked at everything early on. Definitely, I mean, you know, that's, that's something, you know, yeah, I looked at it early on. I looked at everything early on. Um, yeah, you get a sense. I mean, definitely. I don't, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, it's true. What you say is kind of true. I mean, that that was there. I mean, I think for a long time people. You want to go ahead? Oh no, I was just gonna say. Well, it's it's true. It doesn't get spoken about as eloquently and precisely as you just put it. Um, it completely. If you know, everyone sort of says, "Oh, we understand where Cubism came from," but we're not gonna really turn our heads and look at that because we would have to then address a whole shitload of other artists who have been making really complicated fracturing the, the plane, uh, dealing with complex geometry, and how then can we maintain this hierarchy of what is high art and what is not, and then it kicks the door open into what we value culturally in society, what we collect, what we put in institutions, uh, what has monetary value and what does not, the bridges between craft uh, and, and high art, all of this stuff immediately is unleashed like a kraken the second you acknowledge yeah, that exactly. that the cornerstone of all Western abstraction is indeed yeah. indigenous work in Africa. Right. I think that would scare people. I mean, I think it would scare us. I mean, you don't, you know, you have a South African art, they don't say who did it. You know, you look at African, I mean, stuff, and 
you, the person who did it, you know, doesn't mean anything. You know, you look at having math, there's great math, and people are, who cares who I did it? I say there was a you funny, know? there was a show, maybe Lauren, you remember this from maybe three years ago. There was a show at the Met that I read online, and it was, looked like it was going to be this mind blowing moment because they were trying to pull pieces from the modern wing and p reframe them and contextualize them in the African Oceanic section. And I was just like, oh. And I went, and it was like a kiosk, kind of. It was a really yeah, small yeah, little kiosk. Right, right. And uh, I kept looking to turn the corner and see like where the rest of this dialogue or where, where there was like going to be a text or some critical thing. And uh, I'll never forget this moment. I turn the corner, and I see Fred Wilson standing there with his mouth open, thinking the same thing. And I was just like, but Fred, this was like, oh, was but for Fred in particular. <laughs> Because he did this work mining the museum, and he's really known for excavating in the museums and doing these juxtapositions. But it was such a letdown that the Met w was attempting to do this sort of mashup and really open up that dialogue. And, uh, and, uh, and you could tell that institutionally it got sort of downsized. Yeah, I, I don't think, I mean, people, I mean, th this country just doesn't really want that dialogue. I mean, it, it just it just is embarrassing. I mean, they don't want that dialogue. But it's also, yeah. you know, this is, we ended up talking so much about process that I feel a little fired up about this question in particular, but it also, I mean, it plugs into all of these other areas, including like um, the market and who's validated. I know Lauren and I had uh, talked before and uh, about this whole sort of, um, influence of uh, like the Harmon Foundation and very early sort of sort of carving out what is collectible and what kind of work we expect to see from African American artists and systems of reward is like the phrase like what work is going to get rewarded is the work that gets pushed forward historically as as valid so I mean it's we're having this moment where we're having this conversation and Stanley has arrived but he's been here the whole time uh, just like Jack Whitten just like uh, Norman Lewis just like why everyone's talking about Alma Thomas all of a sudden like in the last five years it's really amazing, but it's been the whole time. It's been like the undercurrent um, consistently. Anyway, so. I, I mean, just to follow up. Um, I mean, I guess the thing is, is as, a pa as an abstract painter, and if you're looking to the source, you invariably end up in, in those books. Like, you can't, nobody could, nobody could deny that. And there was just a comment you made about looking for your abstraction to be allowed or to be talked about and and it just was sort of mind-blowing because we're all waiting for that permission to have our work be talked about in a, in a context that's bigger and broader and and for someone of your stature to be still thinking about that is well, you is know really i don't think you know as ours you really you just wait you, you just you're just doing what you're doing you know you're you're just you're just making your art i mean you know you can make your art you know anywhere you know i mean i figure i can you know if they did put me in jail, I could do it with a pencil. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think I can make the, I would make the art anywhere. You know what I mean? I, I don't think that's, you know, whatever you, whatever it takes, you, you know, you have, it's just what you do. You know what I mean? I, um, you're born an artist. I was born an artist, you know I mean? Uh, and, you know, I, I was born a, in this country, they say I was born a black artist, but that's just the way it goes. You know what I mean? And, and I can make my, I can make my, I can make my art anywhere. You know what I mean? Even though I didn't know you know, I mean, there was a lot, to, like I said, a lot of people who tried to please me like, my whole career, you know, my whole life, you know, whether, you know, but I'm going to do it anyway, you know. That's, just, that's, that's what the artist does, you know, and that's what, that's what's so scary for society about the artist, you know, who the artist is, because you dare to be the, you dare to be the human being, you dare to be the individual, you know, on your, and, and, and make this world up on your own terms, you know, and go for it and um, risk, every, risk it all and do it, you know, and you don't know, even myself, I you know you can work and work and work and work. It doesn't have to work out, you know. What I mean, I I mean you know I get there. Oh, things are working out for Stanley now, but oh, I didn't know that. I mean, I I would done it anyway, you know. What I mean, I nothing like I work out. I mean, I was hoping I work out, you know. But you know, I, I you know you could have fancy dreams about it, but so what? But you know, in the studio, that's you're in the studio. You you love the studio. You love making the art. You love the tradition. You love what you're involved with, you know. And you, every artist makes up their own little history. You know, less than to get where you want to get and take what you want to get and be very particular about what you do and do it. You know, you just do it. You know. Are there any other questions? I think. Cool. 
No, no, no. You know, you know, you know, no. I, I loved, uh, no. Goya, you know, people loved Goya in his day because he could paint all that. He could paint the slash, the metal for all the rich folks. You know what I mean? He could do all that really well. And uh, uh, when I look at Goya, I think, you know, I think, oh, the paint is great. The color is great. The way, I mean, he's just, what, what, you know, it's paint on canvas. So anyone who can put paint on canvas uh, in a magical way, I, I'm interested in. I don't care what the subject matter is. And Goya paints, you know, I mean, the, uh, you know, he could really, he could just paint. And so I just go to see, look at Goya, I go, oh, man, uh, uh, you know, the drawing is great. I mean, he, he could really, that's all. So whether it's Velazquez or Goya, I mean, the, the Spanish could really paint. I mean, that's it. And so I just, I just um, love that about it. So a Goya, maybe I'll think if I paint a painting, I'll think, oh, that's a, that's a good Goya red. I'll think, oh, that's Goya red. You know, so, you know, but I look a lot of stuff and then things pop up. You know, things pop I'm hoping they, I'm hoping I can absorb that stuff and take that stuff and study that stuff. And then when I, when I paint, you know, I can get a red and go, that's Goya red. You know, so it's just things like that. It's not, it's not, um, you know, it's really just about, you know, really going out and I go, to, I try to go to Madrid and see Goya once a year. I try to go see uh, Mirandi once a year. And certain artists I, try, I go to see every once a year and visit them and try to steal as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> history on bombmagazine.org. Long, but it's amazing. And one of the things that really got me was you had this aha moment when you went to the pyramids. And I think tonight you kind of, or this afternoon, you rather dismissed people calling you like a grid-based artist. But the density of the stacking of the pyramids kind of did it for you. Is that correct? I mean, I sort of yeah, yeah. Statement. Well, it wasn't it wasn't superior, but yeah, it was Egypt. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that was a lot. You know, before that, I, I I talked about this before a lot. I mean, there's a lot written late. I mean, I talk about that in a sense that I I had a sense that um, I couldn't put the color next to each other because I wanted a lot of air in it, and I kept thinking if I put the color next to each other, I thought the color should be on space, you know, not next to each other. And I thought the color next to each other would take the air out, and I want a lot of air. And so when I went to Egypt, I, I was still looking for some things, and I thought, I, but I was in Rome, and so architecture in Rome is great. And I was really getting involved with architecture. Before that, I was a lot involved with landscape, space, skies, uh, open space like that. When I went to Rome, I got involved with architecture. So I thought, and that, that was fantastic, and I still go to Rome a, a lot. Um, but I thought, well, let me go to Egypt. You know, if you want to see architecture, let me go to Egypt. So I went to Egypt, and um, then I realized I could, I realized then the, the space was in the color, and I could put the color next to each other and not lose the space, not lose the air. Uh, because I, I just saw the density of that. Was, I, I, just, I, I just knew that. So, and and I, when I had that, you know, I was younger, and that was the last piece to the, my major puzzle of me becoming a mature artist, density, you know what I mean? Because I always had questions about how density, you know what I mean? I kept saying, well, I can't get that dense, or I can't do that much, you know what I mean? And so when I went to Egypt, I realized, no, Stanley, you can, you, you can. It, it, it just allowed me, it, it really gave me permission to do what I thought, you know what I mean? That was the last piece of, to major, the, the major puzzle to me. Um, one last question. Hi, um, Stanley, you've been talking about space and your use of color in, in terms of space, um, but I was wondering if you could talk about time, if you think some colors are faster than others, or where you get your rhythm from, or, you know, well, the, how... The, ry the, ry the rhythm is, is the, that's where the music comes in, you know, and the, mu the music's in the rhythm. You know, rhythm was always... I got passed down. Rhythm, in terms of music, black music, passed down. You know, I, I, for me, it's the music. You know, it's the music. That's where it comes from. You know, what I mean, um, you know, uh, the, I, I think for me, um, that's it. That's that's a big part of it. Do you think? I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Do you think it, it kind of compresses time? It creates a sort of history, play, playing with your memory of where this rhythm comes from, say, your relationship to music, your na the neighborhoods you've lived in, the people you've been around. Um, but in, in... Oh, you're so smart. In kind of compressing <laughs> time in that way, what, what do you like to refer to the most with your sense of color? I don't know. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I have no idea. Who cares? I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't, you know, you know, people, you know, you're trying to, ne this thing that I'm doing, the reason it's magical is because I don't nail it down. I don't put it in a coffin, nail it down. And you, you're asking me to take, to nail the thing in a coffin. And I don't want to know. I don't know. I don't even know what time it is. It's just that you tell me this thing and I go with it. But really, who gives a shit? I mean, we don't know nothing. You know, and it's life. You know, that's it. I don't know. But I think Stanley, to sort of <laughs> speak to that, I think <laughs> <laughs> I think that's part of one of the draws of your work because it then allows for everyone to bring what they see and what they think onto that, it and leaves it, it open. Yeah, so I think sure, there's an intentionality sure. with that. Yeah, you yeah. can. You can. Yeah, it's, it's really you can live with it. It's just there for you. It's to, it's to wand, wonder around it. Yeah. You know, mentally wonder around it. I mean, I, I have this uh, colleague, old colleague Frank Bramlett, who I have to say is very ill and, and not doing well. And I remember he made a painting called Wonder, Wondering and wa Wondering and Wandering. Wondering and wandering, and I thought, wow, that's just, that's, that's kind of it. Wondering and wandering. Cool. Great. Yeah. Thank you both so much. Thank all of you all for coming. Yeah, thank you all very much. And um, luckily we have enough time to actually head upstairs to the galleries. So if you want to take one last look at Dance the Orange, head upstairs. Thanks. Liz Harris. Oh, I love you, Jeff. Thank you. Um, I showed your work in 86 or 80s at the Harris, Brown, yeah, the Harris huh? Brown Gallery in Boston. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, uh, That's great. It's thank wonderful. Um, well, thank you so much. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm going to with you, too. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I'm not going to keep you. Oh, great, great. Sure. Wait. I'd be honored. I'd be honored.